Let's pray, church. Father God, we thank you that in you every day is a new day, a day full of hope, Lord, a day full of expectation, and we come this morning to just worship you, to lift our hearts to you, to open our hands to you, to receive from you. Lord God, be glorified in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Church in Baldivus right here. It's good to be here. Good to be able to get together and share in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take this opportunity right now. Move around. Welcome as many people as you can. Give them your best greeting. Alrighty, please take a seat. Please be seated. There we go. A lot of greeting going on this morning. Oh, some energy in the house this morning. We're going to celebrate communion in a short while, but uh, as a prelim to communion, I'm going to ask uh, three people to come and stand on the platform with me, and the timing is impeccable. That would be Catherine, our finance officer, if you come stand up here, please. And Pastor Bron, our children's pastor, is making her way up here. She's been over in the Blue Shirt Brigade, and they've got to return there. And Pastor Leaf here, our youth pastor, all up here. And they've got some news to share with you. And it's just interesting that we chose to share this news this morning, and we've got these banners up here. Generosity, a, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will be himself refreshed. And uh, whoever sows generously will reap generously for God loves... What kind of giver? Cheerful giver. Hey, we did uh, A21 during the women's conference. Uh, we've recently uh, uh, completed Christmas in a shoebox, Samaritan's Purse. And uh, last month, no, back in August indeed, because we're right in October now. In, in August, we did uh, 40 hour famine. All, all three things to kind of bless other people by sharing generously. So I just want to share with you the outcome of that. And so Catherine's first with A21. Thanks, Catherine. As you know, ladies, we support A21 through the Women's Conference. And last year, we raised $374. But this year, we raised $927.81. Come on. So that was greatly appreciated by A21 campaign. Fantastic. All righty. 40 Hour Famine. Okay, we do 40 Hour Famine every year, and I, I put, marked our goal for this year to be $1,000. We ran a quiz night, we had a canteen during Friday night, youth, and, and plus the kids raised money. So we raised a total of $1,265.15. Beat that, Bron. <laughs> Well, I come at the end, so after all your generous giving to A21 and to um, 40 Hour Famine and all the other things that the church is doing, you guys still managed to pack 91 shoe boxes. So um, hats off to you guys. Thank you to all my volunteers that helped prepare the things to go in the box. Thank you to you guys that um, put your money there and we purchased those. That's 91 children in communities in Southeast Asia that now will have the most exciting gift that they've had in a very long time. So um, again, thank you for that. Thanks guys. If you could get that past the last, that would be great. We're going to share in communion this morning and uh, a couple of months ago we did a little series on the covenant and you know that uh, in, in, in Hebrew, karat barit, uh, to cut the covenant and uh, when the covenant is cut there is blood that is shed and uh, praise God we we we're able to uh, share in, in the joys and the blessings that God has for us because of a new covenant, but there was the shedding of blood. And you know, I think that communion is, is the opportunity to renew the covenant, to renew the covenant. Uh, we, we're beginning a brand new series this morning, uh, titled The Next Step. And in a few weeks time, we're, we're plowing our way through the book of Joshua, uh, which is always about next steps. And one of those steps they took, they renewed the covenant. And uh, I'm pleased to say that it's not our blood that is shed with the new covenant. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, 
the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have died. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. When we renew the covenant, part of this is to examine ourselves to see how we stand with regard to the body of Christ. And by the way, the body of Christ is the body, uh, the human body of the Lord Jesus that was nailed to the cross. But you know, the church is the body of Christ. So our, our self-examination and our self-discernment has to do with, uh, with our to, to discerning, examining how we stand uh, with regard to our fellow members of the body of Christ. Uh, it's a time, you know, as, as you eat the bread, uh, you're thinking of the body of Christ that was nailed to the cross, but you're thinking of the body of Christ of whom we each are a part and how we fit into that. Uh, when you drink the cup, you're thinking of the blood of Christ that was poured out on the cross, but you're also thinking about the lifeblood of this, the local church, uh, the body of Christ. It's a time for reflection, you know, that as we renew the covenant. And uh, once we've renewed the covenant, that's a time to celebrate and rejoice. Uh, you know, the bread and the cup are going to be uh, uh, brought around to you right now. As you receive the bread and the cup, eat, eat that bread as soon as you receive it. Hold on to the cup because we're all going to drink together. Let's, uh, let's receive. cup please folks let's stand together before we drink I just want to pray for us father in heaven thank you so much for sending your son to cut this new covenant for us thank you Lord Jesus that your body was nailed to the cross for us that you shed your blood to usher in an agreement a covenant that would stand us in such good stead for all of time and all of eternity this morning, our Father, as we drink this cup, we're mindful of the fact that you gave everything for us, that which was most precious to you in all of eternity, the precious blood of, of your own Son. And Lord, we want to we live in the light of that with victory. We want to live in the light of that with empowerment. We want to live in the light of that as a team, a local church team. So Father, as we drink this this morning, uh, we are renewing our covenant with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all drink together. We want to celebrate this morning. We want to sing our praises to God. Get your best voice ready and let's raise the roof as we sing to God this morning in Jesus' name. Don't these guys do a fantastic job? Would you give them a round of applause? And would you give our Father God a great big round of applause also? Take a seat, please, church. Would you pull out your newsletters and particularly this little blue care card? We're going to spend a few minutes sharing our pens around, encouraging one another. We can use that little form for various things, but one of the things we use it for is just to send an encouraging word to other people in the church. Would you do that this morning? If you're new with us, there's a space where you can fill out your details, record your visit with us. I just want to highlight a couple of things that are in your newsletter this morning. One of the things that I want to highlight is Mopets Carers. We have a fantastic Mops Mothers of Preschoolers program and it's so good that we have a waiting list and we have a waiting list because we need more carers. So if you feel that you could give a couple of hours of your time every second Wednesday during term, there will be a couple little hoops to jump through, such as working with children's checks and other such things. But if you feel you can give a couple hours of your time every second Wednesday, that would be fantastic, because that would just help that program go 
to the next level. If you can do that, that would be great. Just make a little note on the bottom of your care card about that if you can do that. Baldivis Fair is coming up on the 5th of November, not far away. I want to tell you about this because this is one of the best opportunities we have for our community to see who we are as a church. And uh, once again, we've been invited back to host a large stall to be able to give information to our community about our community programs and our ministry. So if you feel that you can volunteer and help us to run that stall, we would love to have you. Just write Baldivis Fair Volunteer on the bottom of your care card and we'll give you some information about that. Um, that would be fantastic. Even if you just want to come down for the day, just pop your head in and say hello and just enjoy the day with your family. It's like a mini royal show. There's loads of stuff there, rides and food and all sorts of stuff. So come down, just have a fun day with the family. But if you can help us by volunteering your time for just a couple of hours, that would be fantastic. We've got a busy bee coming up on the 12th of November. If you've got that Saturday free, we would love to have you down here. We're going to give this place a bit of a spruce up. So if you can help us out with that, that would be fantastic. November the 12th. Finally our celebration dinner, the most important thing, one of the biggest events on your annual church calendar. Please don't miss out on that. If you're um, calling the Baldivis Church your home, we would love to have you at that celebration dinner. That's on the 29th of October, so don't miss out on that just a few weeks away. So if you would get your tickets nice and early, that would be great. Just uh, fill out your care cards, encourage each other, and uh, keep an eye up on the screen for church news. There's so many, many reasons why we come together as regularly as we possibly humanly can. As, as soon as the doors of the church are open, I encourage each and every one of you to get yourselves here. But one of the vital reasons that we do this is to come before God with our tithes and our offerings and worship him. Now, in Malachi, it says that to bring the whole tithe into the house of God, that there will be food in his house. Now, the food is not contingent on your tithe, but it is contingent on you receiving. Your you, you need to give your tithe that you may receive the food that God provides. If you don't give a tithe, 
you're hindering your reception, your receiving of God's food that he wants to give you weekly, daily. So I just want to encourage you to bring your tithes and your offerings as an act of worship. The church, please stand. Father God, we come before you this morning, we come as an act of worship, bringing our tithes and our offerings to you. We do not just come to receive from you, but we come to give back to you a part of what you've already given to us. Father, without your son, we have no hope. So we want to thank you for your precious son. We want to thank you for the provision that you've given in our lives. And out of that abundant provision, we want to give back to you right now. We want to worship you. We want to bow before you in surrender. We surrender all that we are and all that we have afresh this morning to you and to your will. For your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name. During the next song, the tithes and offering buckets will be passed around. You can pop your tithes in there along with your care cards. Please be seated. Yes, his love lasts forever and ever and ever. Hey, um, I think a lot about church, you know. I kind of live and eat and breathe church. And uh, I bump into people all over the place, sometimes right in here, in fact, but all over the place that have ideas about church that don't kind of reconcile with the ideas that I have. And they go something like this. Uh, there's a church that just happens to be plonk there. It's always been there, you know, in any neighborhood. And you can come and you can hitch your opinion and your idea and your plan and your program to something that's already existing, you know? I hear another idea, and that is that local churches get to be where they are because some denominational headquarters funded them and put them there. And none of those ideas square with the Bible and with my experience. The Bible and my experience tells me this. Once there wasn't a church here, and it wasn't as if suddenly three or four hundred people moved in. Uh, there wasn't the church. There was two or three people that God gave an idea to. And they began from there. And the Bell Davis Church is something like that. Maybe more than two or three people, but certainly not the numbers we've got now. And, and we start with nothing. Nothing. No money. No data projectors. No band, no platform, no fancy pulpits, no fancy office space, no kids ministry centre, just absolutely nothing. That's where we began. And in fact, it's this month, it's later on this month, it's 19 years ago since we began. Just a young fella with dark hair and a big black moustache. Looked a lot like Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Frightened everyone. <laughs> Don't frighten so many people now because I've got that grandfatherly look about me. I'm just as mean and as energetic as I ever was. But I'm a granddad. See, the church wasn't always here. No local church always was. Anywhere on the planet. They began with humble beginnings. And each time a church begins, it needs to take the next step. And we're beginning a brand new series this morning about taking the next step. And uh, this church is, is on the cusp of something. We're about to take an, another step. The church that we are today is not the same as the church we were 12 months ago. Some of you weren't here. And the church we will be in 12 months' time will not be like this. Not only will there be different people and new people coming, it'll be a bigger group and we'll be doing things a little differently. There'll be other missions opportunities. I know some folk want some mission opportunity to Thailand now or Cambodia, whatever the flavour of the place is. You know, there's this kind of romantic thing. If we go to Thailand, we're doing something big for God. Maybe there's something big for God to do right here in Baldivis or Port Hedland 
or some other place that God is putting before us right now. <laughs> that you'll hear more about in the not too distant future. You know, whatever we are today, we won't be like this in 12 months time. Uh, maybe the, the service times will change. Maybe where you park your car now and love to park your car every Sunday, someone else will beat you there because they will actually get here at quarter past nine and not 10 to 10 for a 9.30 service. That's if we're having a 9.31, but 8.31 looks a lot more attractive to me. Or oh, and a 10.31 as well. And a 2.31 and a 6 o'clock and a 7.30 service. <laughs> Whatever it'll be like, it's not going to be like it is. God is calling us forward. And I have this sense that it's going to be totally different, big differences coming in the church in the next 12 months. God is calling us to take the next step. And so over the next few weeks, I want to give us a biblical model for taking the next step. And uh, on the night of our celebration dinner, don't miss the celebration dinner. If you claim this as your spiritual home, be at the celebration dinner. You need to sign up sooner rather than later. You really do. So sign up for that. Go out this morning to the information desk and sign up. But our guest speaker on that occasion, Pastor Mark Wilson, he's also going to be speaking on this issue of taking the next step. Now, the Bush, book of Joshua provides us with a model of taking the next step uh, as, as God's people in that uh, era, that dispensation, were ready to move into the promised land. And as we use that model to help us move forward, we need to say that uh, that those, for those people, the promised land, the promised land, they're about to move into it, was tied even to the Ten Commandments. Watch this. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honour your father and mother so that you may live a long life in the what? In the land. That would be the promised land uh, that they would move into under the leadership of Joshua. Now, it's interesting to note that in the New Covenant, and this morning we renewed that covenant. In the new covenant, living a long life in the promised land, that's not what this is about. You might think that Baldivis is the promised land, it kind of is, but that's not what it's talking about. It's about enjoying a long life on planet Earth. Ephesians 6.1, honour your father and mother. This is a commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you, here's a key word, enjoy long life on the Earth. So, Here's the thing. In Joshua's day, it was the quality promised land. In our day, New Covenant, it's the promised quality life. You know, uh, uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, and the second part of that verse, Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and what? Have it to the full or more abundantly, you know. So it, it's, it's that thing. Uh, and of course, the, the Old Testament accounts... Uh, it says, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 6 and 11, these things were written down as examples and warnings for us. So we can look at Joshua and say, oh, that's an example and a warning for us. How are we going to do this? The point is that the people in Joshua's day took steps to move into the place that God had for them. And as a church and as an individuals, because God will have something just tailor-made for you in your domestic, your individual, your life situation. As a church and as individuals, God is calling us to move into the place that he has for us. The place. So this morning I want to outline three things uh, from the, the Joshua account of God calling them into the place they were to step into. And I believe as this church follows God's calling into the place that he would have us to be. And as we follow God's calling, uh, you as an individual into the place that he would have you to be, uh, there are definite parallels for us to use. Number one, uh, God's promises for us. Tanya, I just wonder if you just pin that door back and then we won't hear it bang all the time. Thanks very much. Number one, God's promises for us. Number two, our responses to God's call. And number three, our actions, our actions. When it comes to God's promises for us, as we step into the place to which he calls us, uh, here's how they work out. Here's how they work out. Number one, his place for you. He's got a place for you. Number two, his courage for you. Because sometimes when you step into the place that God has for you, you're going to need courage to do that. So secondly, his courage. And thirdly, his presence in you. Uh, if you're going to go where God wants you to go, you need to be empowered by him. And fourthly, thunder. <laughs> his peace for you. There's a storm coming, guys. <laughs> for the people in Joshua's day, 
uh, God's promise was about the promised land. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, verses 2 and uh, 10. The land I'm about to give you. The land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But it gets way more specific than that, folks, uh, because God is going to call you into something. The promise relates much, uh, very much to, to stepping into God's place for you, stepping into it. Uh, and for us as a church, it's the same. Uh, you step into what God's got for you, and as a church, we step into what God's got for us. Joshua 1.3, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Uh, so, so wouldn't that be good if we just, you know, that's a promise. You set your foot there, and that's your place. And so you find this very attractive piece of real estate, and you say, it's going to walk right in there and it's mine. Well, it's not going to work like that. Uh, that's not how it works at all. Uh, it works out that you can talk to God about this stuff and get to the place where he wants you to be, not just where you want to be. I, I think about this I, no, a few years ago, uh, probably four years ago maybe, maybe five, uh, a number of us walked all around all the urban areas of Baldivis, uh, one wet rainy afternoon indeed, and uh, we, we prayed for all those places. We prayed that God would direct people from the homes out, we're out the front praying, don't know what's going on inside, that God would direct people from those homes, from those divisions to this place right here. And some of you are here and you don't, didn't even know we're outside praying and you're probably here as a result of our prayer. We, we prayed about those places, you know. Uh, and I, I think about that and I think about this land here, you know. Uh, on, on Tuesday the 15th of July, uh, 1997. So, you know, you can work that out. I, I walked onto this property here for the very first time. I'd never been here before, and I guess you hadn't either. And, and it was a worm farm at the time. And I think I got a picture. There we go. That's what it looked like. There you go. We got a little sign down there at that corner now saying the Baldavis Church. And by the way, the street light's not working, but I have reported it and will be fixed in the next five working days. But th that was it. It was a worm farm. It had been a nursery and uh, had it become a worm farm, and I took that picture way back then, and uh, that's what it looked like. It was a very derelict kind of place, but uh, the Spirit of God uh, spoke into my spirit that this land here would become the campus for this church, that this would be God's place for us. And, and I've walked over this property many times. In fact, I get here about seven o'clock every morning and walk all over this property, and I'm praying for people that come onto this property. I'm praying for you as I walk over this property. And now, if there's a storm coming, I put the flag up and I'm back in my office praying for you. But if it's, if it's okay, I'm out here, I'm walking over. I, I do that regularly. And, and you know the story, you know, back then in, in, uh, in, uh, in July 97, uh, how the church had no money. We, we, were, we just paid the rent on a, uh, on a leased facility we're in and we just paid the power bill and the rent and that was about it. And the church paid me and a couple of other staff. We, we were broke. We had no money. And we come out here and wanted to buy eight and a half acres right here, this property here. And uh, you know, the Spirit of God witnessed with my spirit that this was the place to buy, this plot of derelict land that was a worm farm. And I remember the, uh, the real estate guy, Ross McCamish, saying, so what do you think? And I said, yeah, I think this is the one. And he said, so how are you gonna pay for it? And I said, well, we broke, we got no money. And he said, you think this is a God thing, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. And uh, with that, I'm praying to God, tell me what to say. Tell me what to say, God. Tell me what to say. And God said to me, it's $375,000, which is quite a bargain back then. It even sounds a better bargain now, doesn't it? For eight and a half acres in beautiful Baldivis. And the uh, uh, Spirit of God said to me, tell him, how about vendor finance interest-free for a few years? So I said, Ross, how about vendor finance interest-free for a few years? And he laughed and said, <laughs> you'd never get that. Well, we did. Now, you listen to this. Uh, this is from a book called Building Wealth Through Invest Investment Property. Vendor finance is almost non-existent in Australia. In a few cases, the vendor will carry a first or second mortgage, but be wary, a lower interest rate is usually coupled with a higher purchase price. In Australia, less than 1% of loans are vendor financed. But when God's telling you to bowl that one up, that's what you do. And within 48 hours, the real estate guy got back to me and said, the vendor said, yes, as long as you come up with $40,000 by the 1st of September. We're broke, right? And, and here's me on this property. And people know I'm coming here, but 
I've got to go back to a much smaller church than we've got now and tell them uh, in, in the July, you know, like a couple of months later, we've got to have 40 grand and we can have this property. And I went back to the church and we had a little meeting after the service or whatever and said, this is the story. And I'm telling you, by the 1st of September, we had the 40 grand. But that wasn't all, see. If you, got a, if you have a vendor finance interest free, you're going to have monthly or six monthly, we had six monthly payments. Every six months we had to pay 60 grand or 70 grand. So the church was aware of this, so I come back, we've got to raise another 60 by the 1st of March, you know. And, and we did. And then six months later, guys, uh, by the 1st of September, we've got to raise another 70 grand. And we did. You know, and I think about this generosity thing, think about Catherine's talk this morning, and, and we just did that. And, and so we did that, you know, the 40 grand, the 60, the 70, and then there was another 70 due the March of the following year, and we, we fell a bit little short. But by now, we have equity, and equity is such a good thing. I went to Westpac. Uh, Westpac became good friends of ours. We became good friends of Westpac, and we've remained in that good friendship ever since. And they lent us the rest of the money, and it become more manageable now for the church, make monthly payments. It was just sort of part of our offerings. And, and, and every, I will give you every place where you set your foot. And we'd set our foot here. We got it interest-free, you know, until, uh, for a couple of years, until uh, the bank took over that loan, you know. And, Suddenly we have equity and we are landholders right here in, in Valdivis. And I think about that. And some of you were with us in that journey, but not so many of you. And I think the rest of you just came and it was all here for you. You know what I reckon? I reckon you ought to encourage those who did this morning and say, praise God for that. Come on, let's do it. Because they're the ones that got it going. They took the risk. They went into the stormy land and paid the money so that the rest of us could come today. It wasn't always here. <laughs> this is God's place for us, you know. And uh, uh, through taking the next step in sacrificial giving, you know, uh, uh, we built this first building. And I, I think about that and I've got some pictures for you here. We poured the, the slab. Oh, that'd be Gordon there doing the compacting because we built it ourselves. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then it sort of turned out like this. And, and just fantastic, and, uh, and we built it, you know, and I think of some of the folk that uh, were Bricky's laborers here, uh, some of our, our ladies, mostly ladies, and Bricky's laborers, and I uh, think of uh, when we did the inside work here, you know, at night time, we were here sort of 24-7 building this thing, and doing the brick paint, putting the roof on, we were, we were here doing all that stuff, you know, here compacting. I was like that for a long time after that. I still don't think I've gotten over it yet. And, and, and we had to give, you know, we were still given money, you know. If the 40 grand, the 60 grand, the 70 grand, just to get the land, you know. And we, we were given the money and we, we kept the price down to about half by building it ourselves, this, this first building. And uh, it, just, it was just fantastic. I remember uh, that car park right out there, it was still sand, you know. And uh, I was standing out there talking to the Baptist pastor a guy from the Baptist Church, uh, Ken O'Reilly at the time, and he came out to see what God was doing here because it was getting everyone thinking around the church, what's happened? They've gone out there into the cow paddocks of the bush. They've gone crazy, you know, because there was no freeway then. In, in 2000, when we built this, no, no freeway. And, and, and there was no houses, really. There was no Baldova Central, no Chase, no Spires, whatever, you know. And there was no Heritage Park, no River Gums, no... Highbury Park and, and no shopping centre. What are those crazy people doing out there? And, and so Ken came out to see what was going on. And while he was there, one of our people came, came on site here. And uh, he, he called me over. And uh, it was over near where the gazebo, there was no gazebo, there was, a, there was an industrial uh, tank there, that's what was there. And, and he called me over and I came over and I said, I'll be back in a minute, Ken. And I went over and the guy was crying his eyes out, our man. And he gave me an envelope. You see, his mother had recently died and left him some money, and he gave me. And he said, "This," and he was crying. He said, "This is from my mum for the church," and I put it in my pocket. And we, uh, I prayed with him, and he went on his way. And I went, "Ken, is everything all right there?" The guy looked heartbroken. I said, "I don't know what's in here." I said, "This is from his mum, but I'm going to open it up." And I showed Ken it was ten thousand dollars, and Ken said, "May I get more pastoral situations like this where people are breaking their hearts?" You know? <laughs> Now, now, guys, $375,000, and we sold off less than half of this property about five years ago. The back four acres we sold off for $800,000. You think about that. 
we were able to put ourselves in a financial position where we're debt free and we're able to build the children's ministry centre. There we are pouring the slab for the children's ministry centre. There we all are out on a Sunday celebrating that we've got a pad down and there it begins to get built. That's the children's ministry centre there. It wasn't always there, you see. It just popping up there and uh, there it is. Not all the lawn in yet and no sign on the thing and uh, that's like five years ago in November. Uh, and, and you see, we're taking the next step, taking the next step, and, and subsequently, you know, because we got ourselves in a reasonable financial situation, but a church is only ever in a good financial situation as long as people continue to give. You know, that, that's, that's the facts of the matter. And, and we're in, in uh, two, 2010 and 2011, we were able to do the next stage of building, uh, which is the, that's the admin centre and uh, the concrete getting poured there and uh, it's, it began to spring up and as you see that grew there and uh, praise God that a lot of you gave generously that and helped on site uh, looking out and seeing a guy that put the roof on it there you know and uh, there's the kids there celebrating while we were still in here that morning we went over later on and uh, and and so the the admin center is there and because we moved out of where the office space was uh, we were able to build a foyer with access to the prayer room and to the bookshop and to the coffee shop. But it was all taking the next step. And God said, every place you set your foot, you know, independence upon God, when he calls you to take the next step, you can expect God to bless you. This is God's place for us. He's doing something here. James, so I'm thinking about this, you know. What if I'd never said, well, we're just broke, mate. We can't buy this land. Uh, James 4.2, you do not have because you do not ask. We asked for vendor finance interest free and we got it. You know, a few years ago, well, like 10 years ago, our church used to do a, we still do a Christmas carols in the park and that's, guys, musicians be really overjoyed about this because that's all in process now we've got the whole thing you know ordered the sound and ordered the the, the staging for that uh, and this is a this is a small one compared to what we, we used to do one over in, in anniversary park over near rockingham city shopping center and that was like a i don't know thirty thousand dollar budget and we used to have a sideshow alley there and we used to have fireworks and all this stuff where do you get the money from well sponsors I remember the first time I went to Rockingham City Shopping Centre, I said, you know, we're doing this big show and showed them all the stuff we put together. And I said, I wonder if you'd sponsor us, you know, thinking they might give us $1,000. And uh, they said, how much would you like? And I thought, well, let go out on a limb, Gordon. You know, go out on a limb. I said, uh, 5000 She said, done, wrote me out the cheque. I thought I should have asked for twenty. <laughs> You do not have because you do not ask. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So God is calling us on. He's calling us on to take the next step, you know. And, and this is true for the church. This is true for you, the individual. Uh, I remember looking at this derelict property in 1997. There it is again, you know, and, and I saw what it could become. I remember God gave us a vision what it could become. You know, it was derelict. There had been a, a flower nursery here that had gone broke and then the worm farmer had taken over. We actually inherited him and he paid the lease amount to us for a little while there. And I, I remember once uh, Ruth McGoran, uh, in fact, she had a, like a Toyota van and it had a tow bar. My car didn't have one and, and my daughter-in-law, uh, the, 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 their father has got a, uh, a, a vehicle trailer because he does uh, uh, old cars and vintage cars. And so I borrowed his trailer and put these poles up, big trailer, and we just went over this property picking up all the derelict stuff, like junk everywhere. There'd been previous civilizations here, you know. <laughs> I, I know when Rob does mowing, every now and again, another bit of metal will pop up from the lawn area, you know, there's another, we don't know what was here before we were here. Other civil, and we, we stacked this trailer about like that high, and it was a Friday afternoon, and thought, that, thought the, uh, think that the tip closes at 5.30, and we got there just after five and it was closed, closed at five. So we brought the trailer back here and we used to have a big old shed where the Children's Ministry Centre Garden is now and we parked it in there and, and took it down the next morning, you know, and we filled the thing up again. We kept filling it up, filling it up, filling it, because this was just a derelict property. But I could see what it could become. And, and, and by the eyes of faith, I could see people, because it's not, not about buildings. The buildings are just, tools, you know, they're just vehicles, they're just to accommodate people and ministry. And in my mind's eye, I could see people coming onto this campus 
And you know, not just on Sundays. I could see them coming every day of the week. I could see a children's ministry center, you know, with kids, just loaded with kids. And, and I could see all this by faith, you know. And if, if you want to uh, see, see this really happen, join us for our first... Uh, for the first Friday of the month in November when we do coffee shop again here, you know, like at five o'clock or whatever time we do it, because youth are here, lots of them. And it's what I saw in my vision. Because see, like at four o'clock we have kids club and then at 5.30 we have junior youth and then at seven o'clock we have uh, the older youth and it just keeps on rocking and rolling through and, and now that we've got the coffee shop going and that's such a blessing you can sit there have a coffee and a bit of carrot cake chocolate cake mud cake whatever and you can watch all this unfold the vision I saw back then people coming people sitting down to have a coffee people have dropped their kids off their youth off and their kids as yet do not come to this church but they'll now stop and have a coffee and a piece of carrot cake with me and I can chit chat to them out there and, and they're, they're coming there are people, and this was the vision God gave us here. In spite of the junk, and there was, it was just a lot of junk, I can tell you. Uh, I could see this would be a campus for people, for ministry, you know, people coming to worship him, people coming to get plugged into him, people getting saved and connected to God and to be used by him. Joshua 1.3, God said, I will give you every place you set your foot as I promised. Secondly, God promised courage to those who would step out, because if you're going to step out, it, it, it requires courage. You go out on a limb, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, Joshua 1, 5 and 6, uh, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and what? Courageous. And Joshua 1, 7, be strong and what? Very courageous. 2 Timothy 1, 7, if you want a, a New Testament, New Covenant sort of rendition of that. Uh, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. So firstly, God's place. Secondly, God's courage for you. Thirdly, uh, God promised that when you step out uh, following his call as a church or as an individual, his presence will be in you. His presence in you. Joshua 1.9, the Lord your God will be with you. Joshua 1.5, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Try this one from a new covenant point of view. Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? I was doing my soap journaling the other day, uh, Haggai. Uh, through the week, uh, Haggai chapter one and uh, chapter two, chapter one and verse thirteen, and you know Haggai's about they're supposed to be building, and they just kept on putting it off. They're building their own house and weren't building the Lord's house, so the Lord was giving them a bit of a talking to, and and uh, then the Lord said to Haggai, He said, "Tell the people that I'm with them." And so Joshua says, uh, Haggai says, "The Lord says I am with you," and it says that when. Haggai says, the Lord said, I am with you. Whoever he said that to in the first instant, it said it sparked enthusiasm in them. And then it sparked enthusiasm in some other key leader. And then in some other leader, enthusiasm was sparked. And then it says, in everyone, everyone, enthusiasm was sparked in everyone and they began to build. And I'm thinking, you know, when you know the presence of God is with you, you're going to be sparked into enthusiasm. And by the way, enthusiasm uh, comes from Greek, en theos, theos, God, in, you in God, God in you, is enthusiasm when you know God is with you. Fourthly, God promised his peace for you when you step out in response to his call. Joshua 1, 13 and 15 in the CEV, the Lord your God has given you uh, given you, he's talking to the Reubenites in fact, that, that tribe got land on the eastern side of the Jordan uh, has given you the land here on the east side of the Jordan River where you could live in peace the Lord will give peace to them that's all the other tribes of Israel as he has given peace to you and, and I'm thinking when you step into the place that God has for you as a church as an, you're going to get peace uh, Acts 9.31 in the NLT the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord and with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit it grew in numbers. Some folk get all bent out of shape when you talk about the church growing and talk about the numbers, we want 3,000 here, 5,000 here. Someone was counting and you find that all through the New Testament, someone was counting. God calls us to step out and he promises his place for you, his, his courage for you, his presence in you and his peace for you. Uh, God's promises are for us but you'll only receive what he's got attached to those promises if you step out and take the next step. So what are our responses to be? Well first get ready. 
get ready. So I gave you a whole lot of frightening stuff as we began, you know, missions, different service times, uh, someone taking your car space, someone taking the seat that you just love to sit in because you got here too late and it was already filled up. Uh, all those kind of, it's, for some folk that, that'll, that, that'll scare them, you know. Uh, so, y y you know, you need to get ready. And Joshua 1.11, Joshua 1.2, get ready. Joshua 1.11, get your supplies ready. So what are, what are your supplies? And I'm thinking about this, uh, you know, as a staff, and we have staff meetings, we, we think about the Christmas in the park that I already mentioned, you know. We've got to get the supplies ready for that. That means we need to know what the programs are. We need to know about getting the platform in. We need to you know, get the sound in. Oh, yeah, the toilet's in. All those supplies, you know celebration dinner thing we're doing. We need to know about the supplies. Uh, we need to have the caterers all booked, you know. We need to have big round tables in here, a whole lot of other things. So that's the supplies. Uh, we're already preparing for next year for our May. We do a leadership and ministry conference, uh, bigger than Ben-Hur, of course. And uh, we've we, we got our supplies ready. You've got to have the speakers come. You've got to have the food. You've got to have all this stuff. Uh, women's conference, you need to get the supplies ready, you know. Every Sunday service, we get the supplies ready. You know, uh, the run sheets, <laughs> we've run out of run sheets. We've got to run back to the office to get more run sheets. We get our supplies ready. Uh, every building program we do, we get our supplies ready. I think you understand that. I think about the parable of the, of the ten virgins. You know, you know that story? Parable of the ten virgins. By the way, there's a, a church. Some churches do this, and I think Warner Church does this. They, they advertise what the pastor's preaching on, you know, have the title of the, the message. And at the front of this church, they had a morning service. Sermon title, Ten Virgins. Evening service, What Can One Man Do? <laughs> the ten virg virgins, five of them had the oil that would keep them going in their lamps and the other five didn't and when the, when the bridegroom came they had to scurry off and get their oil, the five. So you need to get your supplies ready, that's the point. Joshua 1.3, you know, uh, get ready. Set your foot, every place you set your foot. So if it's called for you or the individual to step out, and for some of you it is, uh, well then, then you need to set your foot. If it's a call for us as a church, we all, as a team, need to set our feet. It's a team thing. Uh, it, for you, the individual, that's your thing. But no one else can do it for you. And as a church, well, I've got to rally the team. That's the thing. So get ready, set your foot. Thirdly, stay focused on, uh, on God's plan for you. As a leader, I need to stay focused because a lot of other people have plans for my life and for this church, and they come and tell me what their opinions are. And you know everyone has an opinion, right? It's like everyone has an opinion. Everyone has one. <laughs> you all do. And uh, I've got to stay focused because people come to me and they want me to do this and that, so I need to stay focused. Joshua 1.7, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the left or to the right that you may be successful wherever you go. So stay focused, no turning to the left, no turning to the right. Stay true to the game plan, stick to the vision, stick to the mission, stick to the strategy. Don't wander, just stay focused. Joshua 1.8 in the New Living Translation, uh, study the book of instruction. Uh, that, that would be that one. Uh, continually, meditate on it day and night so that you'll be sure to obey, obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed. Everyone wants to do well. I think, that's, I think that's fair. Everyone wants to, to, to prosper and succeed. Everyone wants to do well, whether it's in business. You're a business person, you want to do well. Uh, if, in your family, you want to do In your marriage, you want to do well. Everyone wants to do well. Whatever you do, you want to do well. As a student, you want to do well. I don't think any student says, well, I want to come bottom of the class. Uh, you, that's, you might come there, but no one's... You want to prosper and succeed. You want your day to go well. So stay focused. Stay in the book of instruction. Be sure to obey everything in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed. So get ready, set your foot, stay focused. Fourthly, be strong, courageous, and cooperative. So uh, here at the Baldovis Church, I'm uh, building a staff team. And what a handsome looking group of people. Look at that lot there. That's your staff there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Everyone's clean shaven except one, and it's all good. And that's the team. Now, <laughs> my plan is to build a, <laughs> build a team that is strong and courageous and cooperative. That, that's the plan. Uh, now, frankly, just because you hire someone and they're good and they're all good, they're not a team until they become a team. They're just a bunch of individuals. So, so we work hard at that, you know. We really work so that, they can, so that the team can lead the church in being strong, courageous and cooperative as the bigger team. 
It's, it's about team. And, and how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Well, you know, we do practical things like uh, we have this weekly staff meeting where we teach on this stuff and where we in interact and so on. But it's like word and spirit, word and spirit, word and spirit, word and spirit, being positive, being optimistic, uh, you know, ready to work together, ready to stay accountable to one another, uh, ready to, to back one another up, ready to give support and, and to stay on the same page. So it, it takes courage. Watch this. Joshua 1, 6, be strong and courageous. Joshua 1, 7, be strong and very courageous. Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Joshua 1, 18, so be strong and courageous. Are you getting the point here? No? Hey, this is God speaking this into you. Uh, Joshua 1, 16, they answered Joshua, we will do whatever you command us and we will go wherever you send us. And I'm thinking with a courageous team like that, we could charge hell with water pistols and put the fire out. We're all together here, you know. So why do you think that God said so many times to be strong and courageous? Well, because too easily we lose concentration. Too easily we do. And we lose courage. Too easily. We lose vitality. Too easily we become bored. Oh, I'm bored. Your teenager's going to say that, but adults say it too. I'm bored. I'm bored. We, we get bored. We lose focus, you know. We, we don't think we're up to the mark. We become disenchanted. We become non-cooperative too easily. So God just keeps speaking courage into us. He just wants that courage right into us, you know. And I think about that. He wants us to speak courage into one another. And you know the word encourage, that means courage in. You encourage someone, you're putting courage into them. Now let's wrap up this message. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What we do uh, when we get ready? What we do about getting ready? Well, it's about the supplies. You know, Joshua 1.11, get your supplies ready. So if you're building and buying property and so on, you know what that means. That's a reference to finance and funds. You know that. Uh, if it's about being part of a local church team or about a business venture or about your ministry, well, then it's mindset. One thing about getting your supplies ready is mindset. You know, uh, uh, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, the proverb says. It, you know, it's how we think, you know, our, our, our phobias. And we all have them. You know, it's dealing with those. It's, it's skills, upskilling perhaps. It's about your calendar, how you manage your time. And, and uh, to be perfectly honest, some of us are hopeless at that. Managing our time, you know, managing our calendar, managing our relationships. It's too easy we can drift into the wrong thing. Get your supplies ready. What barriers will you need to deal with? Joshua 1.11 says you will cross the Jordan River. As it turned out, we find in Joshua 3.15, when they got to the Jordan River, it was seasonally flooded. And humanly speaking, it was impossible to cross that river at all, you know, because it was flooded. Uh, and God wanted them to go across. So what would they do? Oh, oh, I know, I know. Pray and fast, right? No. Do not pray and fast. Do not. Sometimes we put off what we should do and we try to get all spiritual and we want to pray and fast because we're going to put it off. When God just wants us to get on and do it, you know. I think about, uh, you know, crossing the Jordan River is one thing. These guys should have had experience at this because under Moses, you know, like a generation prior to this, they'd come out of Egypt and they were confronted with the Red Sea and the Egyptians chasing them. And there they are. And, and they started to wail before God, you know. They started praying, oh, God. Oh, why did you do this to us? Oh, God, can you get us out of here? Oh, God, should we turn back to the Egyptian and go back into slavery? Oh, that'd be better than them killing us. And they began to wail. Oh, God. And, and God spoke to Moses. Exodus 14, verse 15 in the Living Bible. Tell the people to quit praying and get moving. Sometimes God just wants to get out of our butt and get going. We're going to let some fasting and praying and stuff. Well, well that's a problem there, but today's problem is tomorrow's miracle. Let's see the miracle of God unfold. And the, the question for you ought to be, well, what is your flooded Jordan River? What is the barrier that's holding you up from moving into where you ought to go? What is your flooded Jordan River? And for most people, it's going to be up here in the head. That's where it's going to be. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's a mindset. It's a phobia, lack of belief, uh, wrong relationships, uh, wanting just to be comfy with nothing changing. It could be all that. So, so at the flooded Jordan River, God said, step into the water and the flowing waters will stop upstream and, and the flood will stop and you'll just be able to walk through. So watch how this unfolded. Joshua 3.15. As soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan River and their feet touched the water, edge the waters upstream stop flowing and everyone what crossed over S see my friends as a church we are going to take the next step we are going to take the next step 
whatever that might be. Now I've given you some ideas earlier on. Now, some people might just want to stay on the other side of the Jordan, you know? I just want to urge you to come on through. We're going to move through. It's going to mean change. It will mean change. You know, you know what? If you don't change, that's called status quo. And status quo is not a good place to be. We need to continue to move on. It's going to mean change. It's going to mean change in lots of things, times and missions and all sorts of things. Uh, an evangelistic cutting edge is coming. I'm going to tell you, things are going to change. So God is calling us on to take the next step. I, I think God is calling some of you individuals on to take a step in your own individual private life. That's, that's for you to process. I, I'm leading a church. I want to say, get ready. Get ready. Uh, get your supplies ready. Set your foot. Stay focused on God's plan. Be strong and courageous and cooperative. Church, we are a team. We are a team. God is calling us on to make, take the next step to impact this community. Here's an interesting thing, you know, we don't even have to ask the community to come. We don't, we don't get in here. They're, they're moving in all around us. They're coming right to our doorstep and God wants us to impact this community, this neighborhood and way beyond. This is for them. So we need to fasten our seatbelts, hold on tight, because we're going for it. Father in heaven, I want to thank you that you've called us to be a team. Father, you build your church bit by bit. It wasn't just an accomplished fact that there was a church here. It's been one step after another, and you're calling us to take the next step. And so, Father, this morning as we listen to your voice, don't want to listen to the weird voices in our heads. Don't want to just listen to the voice of the preacher. I want to hear your voice this morning. Father, speak to us this morning and, and move us on. Motivate us. Give us that courage, Father, and help us to put courage into one another. Uh, Lord God, help us this morning to take that next step. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, folks. Let's stand. You know, for some folk, the next step's going to be you need to have a right relationship with God because you haven't. You kind of know about God but don't know him personally. By the way, I put that, for some of you it's going to be believer's baptism, and we, we did that video clip of uh, some baptisms. I call that clip the three Amandas, by the way. So I, 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 relatively, I baptized relatively few people in this church. I, uh, I baptized the three Amandas because of uh, connect group connection and, and uh, some other connections I have in the, in the, in the office and so on. But uh, they just happened to be Amanda. Within a 12-month space, I baptized three Amandas. But uh, generally, other folk do the baptizing here. But for some of you, you know that that's what you need to do next. You, you need to surrender to God and go through the waters of baptism and you do that. That might be your next step. Uh, some of you, it's just, you know, you need to surrender to God. God speaking to you and you need to just say, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm handing over my life to you. And for some of you, it may be another step in discipleship, in ministry, in whatever it might be. In these moments, as we sing our song, God speaking to you, you process this and, 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 and take the opportunity to step out, take the next step. I'm going to invite you to come and stand in the front this morning if that's you, God speaking to you. And right now you'll know if he's speaking to you because your heart's going to be beaten just a little bit faster than everyone else's as God puts the pressure on you by his Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite you to come and stand down the front this morning. I'll have folk who will move in with you and stand with you and pray for you and with you this morning and encourage you. But if God's speaking to you, don't put him off. Don't put him off. He'll bless you when you step out in his name. Let's sing. Father, you've called us to stand side by side and to step out and take the next step side by side as a team. Thank you, Father God. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. That we're not left as orphans, but you've sent your Holy Spirit to live in us, to empower us. Thank you, Father, that you've given us each other from various and diverse backgrounds put us all together for such a time as this to take the next step and make an impact on our community, on our neighbourhood. Bless us, our God, as we step out. And Father, I want to pray for everyone in the house this morning. You know their story and you know issues that they're struggling with. Uh, Father, give them courage, give them empowerment, uh, give them discernment, enable them to move forward, move ahead, in spite of any Jordan, flooded Jordan River that may stand in their way, help them to push through in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, before you move, just need to tell you this corner over here where the communion table is, we call that prayer corner. 
If you're needing prayer for anything this morning, you head over that way and there'll be folk there to pray with you and for you. Would you visit with the uh, information desk this morning and sign up for the celebration dinner? That would bless us. If you could get your names down, we know if, if, uh, who's coming and how many are coming. That would help us immensely. And bookshop will be open, coffee shop's open. If you met someone new this morning, take them in, buy them a coffee. Would you do that? Bless them with the coffee. Put some courage into them as well as coffee. Would you do that? And tonight, 6 o'clock, we've got a service here. Love to see you back here tonight for our 6 o'clock service. Bless you guys. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.